What's up guys, this is Zach with Wired Customs and today I'm going to show you how to tear down a 39 Ford transmission. Okay, so this one's already been apart. You can tell that by the input shaft right here. The throttle is not on the bearing. And the output shaft right here is actually set up for a drive shaft opposed to a torque tube. So, so this is actually a lucky snag. Let's get into tearing it down. Okay, we're gonna start with taking the top off. It's just these six bolts. This should be half inch. Okay, once you get those bolts off, it should come off fairly easily. You might have to smack it back and forth a little bit, but this, this one's already been apart once, so. There we go. Top came right off. Now we can visually inspect to see if it's actually a 39 transmission. Um, sometimes you can find the case with the wrong gears inside, or you find the early case with the uh, 39 top on the early case. So here's how we tell. The easiest way for me to tell is the double right here, the double synchronizers right here. On the earlier transmissions, they're only single, single on each side. So, all right, so whenever I take one of these apart, I just take everything apart. Don't take apart the bare minimum. Get as much off of it as you possibly can. It's easier to clean that way. Um, like I said a second ago, this fork should have been behind this, but it's not. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the spring off the throwout bearing. The throwout bearing should just come right off. And hook the spring. The throwout bearing should just slide right off. That should be the only thing holding it on. And usually this would be behind that. Okay. Now this is probably one of the harder parts to take out. Um, if you want to get the shaft out of the bottom though, um, you have to push it out the back, not out the front if you leave the fork on. So it's up to you how much you can take out or if there's any play on this shaft here, um, you need to take it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the front off right here. Should be these four half inch bolts. You might have to give this one a little bit of a tap to break it loose from the seal. Okay. The smallest thing we've got. Never hit anything hard enough that you can actually put a pin in the steel. Let's see if I can get a little pry out of it. There we go. So don't really force stuff. That's how you get burrs and scratches. Okay, then that comes off. Next, we're going to take these beautiful rings out right here, these snap rings. So I use two pliers. It's probably hard to see right now. I'll show you on the next one. And you pry one side up and you run it around. Try, don't let it spin. You run it around until the clip comes off. Now these are the hardest part about a 39 transmission is taking this off right here. Um, this off, the bigger one off that's right here on the edge multiple ones on the inside. Um, when you get a rebuild kit, don't reuse these. The way that I get them off actually bends them. Probably can't see it in the video, but that's crooked and no good now. It's only for worst case scenario. I have a little box of used ones, just in case I need one all of a sudden. <clears throat> okay, so now there's nothing holding the input shaft in. Technically, it should wiggle off from the front. Um, it's usually not that easy. If this was a brand new case, I could wiggle this off from the front right now, but it's not gonna work out that way. Um, I'm gonna start disassembling the output shaft, get some of the tension out from inside the case, but eventually this will come straight out the front. So this case is somewhat dry. I took the shifter off earlier uh, this year and dumped out the oil, sprayed it with penetrating oil and just put it all back together just so to make sure nothing's sticking on the inside. So what I usually do is you can drain it from the plugs at the bottom, or you can just take the top off and spin it over to the side and drain the oil out of it. So now let's take off the housing for the output shaft. Um, let's see, six, one, two, three, four, five, six 
bolts right here on, and the whole output shaft's gonna come right off. Um, let me see if I can get this off in the meantime. That's been on there for a long time. So whenever someone took this out of the car, they look like they just cut the Speedo, which is not uncommon. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not restoring the car. I'm restoring the transmission and putting it in a different car. So Speedo is not that big of a deal right now. And the old Speedo stuck in there a little bit. Might have to take that out from the inside. There we go, okay. So these are just like squares and it just goes down in the groove in there, that's a square. And the gear on the inside spins this cable and the cable spins the speedometer. Oh, I'm gonna get stuck in there now. Okay. All right. Now, another way I can tell that this has been apart before, if you see the holes in this bolt here, okay, this should be laced on. Okay, tail shaft's off. And we're missing a ring right here on the back. Um, that technically holds the speedometer gear on, which is this one. Uh, in the bearing so the bearing could technically slide out this way because this is holding it from going in this should have been holding it from going out but that's fine it's stuck on there pretty good and that's why i keep spares but your rebuild kit should come with all new rings so what, what i'm going to do now well there's supposed to be a cotter pin right here take this cotter pin out drive this to the side this pin is holding these two shafts in right here the gears for the bottom down here. So let's get this out. Once these shafts are out, both gears will drop lower down. We'll be able to get the input shaft out further. I get mine from the early Ford store, check them out. I'm not sponsored by them by any means but give them a look, they're pretty legit. Okay, now while I have this up in the air, I'm gonna hit the reverse shaft out. I'm gonna hit it into the case. There should be plenty of room to access it inside of there once it's out. Small hammer, small taps. First gear just fell down. Now when we go to take things out, just be really careful, make sure you know where all your shims are. Now, if your throw out is still in in the front, you cannot hit this pin forward. You have to hit it to the reverse. You have to hit it backwards. Flip this around. And now I have some really nice punches just for this gonna allow me to hit it straight out the back right here okay so I take the retainer pin and I slide it through and I just work it out like this now that falling down was that lower gear should have fallen down far enough to actually get things apart okay so that down far enough the output shaft fell down now I can get the input shaft hopefully the rest of the way front there we go okay input shaft this is what it should look like there should be roller bearings inside of there these are usually burnt up these roller bearings are usually always spin now I'm gonna have to get this to where you can see it really well because to get this output shaft out of the housing you have to disassemble it inside the transmission usually the synchronizer right here pull that out um, I'm going to put up a diagram at the end of the video. So if you're taking this apart going, oh man, I need to be paying attention. Um, well, yeah, pay attention. But at the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you a diagram with an exploded view of what everything's supposed to go back together as. So take the synchronizer out, make a mental note of which way it's facing. Um, this one is completely spent. 
you can see how it's rounded off right here on the edges. Um, there shouldn't be any harsh, sharp edges on the synchronizer, which this one has. Uh, it'd probably drive. It just won't shift as nicely as we'd like it to shift. Okay, there should be a spacer for that roller bearing that I was trying to show you on the input shaft right here. And as I get it off, I'll show you so you can see everything. There's our spacer. It's just a ring. Save this ring, okay? There's nothing wrong with these. So now we're back to these really crappy clips that I wish I had my old school. But I still wish I had my old school clip pliers, ring, ring pliers, okay? So I'm gonna have to use the old school screwdriver trick to get this out of this groove. And this one is not gonna come out as easy as the one in the front. So what I usually do is try to get an edge of it, spin the screwdriver to where it lifts itself up. And since I can't get it there, I'm gonna spin it a little bit more. Yep, spin it so I can get it in that gap here in the tooth so I can pry it up better. So hang on to the output shaft and get the struggle. The struggle is real on these, so I might not have to pay attention on the camera for a second. So when you're struggling with these clips, no, the struggle's real, you're not alone, okay? I'm here for you. It's rough. Okay, this should slide off. Hopefully, it's not stuck on. Make sure you're prying in the right spot. I'm gonna pry between the gear and the synchro here and see if it's gonna go forward. Be really careful with your synchro gears. Do this over here. Be really careful with your synchro gears. We do not wanna put burrs on them. Now be careful not to hit this ring off. We don't want our detents to shoot out and lose them. Okay, we want to reuse them unless unless there's something wrong with them. Detents can be perfectly fine, okay? So let's set this aside and disassemble that after we're done. So now we have the hard part off. Everything should just about slide off. So a synchronizer in the back. Our next gear. Now there's a bushing on the front. Be wary of this bushing, don't lose it. Slide that off the front. There's that bushing, here's this orientation. And in case you're trying to get this back together later. Set that to the side. All right, last gear. Don't drop the output shaft on the floor. Okay, this is the rear. Make a mental note of that. Now, some people when they're disassembling, they put them on a bench in order. Um, that's a good idea if this is your first time. Um, I just throw them all over the bench and I clean them and throw it all back together. So here's the output shaft. Okay, here's our last bearing and the speedometer gear, these should go out that direction, okay? So, probably need to heat this up to get it off. Now you can heat these up, you can get them red hot, but what you cannot do is cool them down. Don't blow them with air to cool them down. Um, don't quench them in water to cool them down. The problem is, is making it brittle by cooling it down too fast. So, I'm probably gonna have to torch this off to get that completely apart. Now here's our reverse gear on the side here, the small one's reverse gear, and make a mental note of which way the gears are facing, because there is such a thing as backwards, believe it or not. Here's our bottom gears. Now there should be washers on both sides of these. So when you're taking this off, make a mental note of where they fall off, okay? So for me, this one fell off the back which is simple. We have these two tangs right here. That goes inside the tangs, okay? So that's the bushing for the rear. Now these bushing for the front, okay, mental note. This little hook right here hooks inside the case so it doesn't actually spin, it stays in place. Now inside this is roller bearings. So hopefully you're watching this video before you do it and you didn't just drop the roller bearings all over the floor. So I'm gonna push the roller bearings out Sometimes they'll fall out individually, okay? So put your finger inside of it, 
tried to hold it and set it straight up and down. Most likely not going to reuse these. Try not to reuse them, okay? Roller bearings on the front. Be careful. Don't drop them out on the floor. Worst case scenario, um, you want to at least have them on hand. Then there's a shim in between the two roller bearings to keep them from sliding in and out from one another. Okay, so we're almost done. Put those gears to the side. Get out your pin for the reverse gear that we hit out earlier. Now the case is technically fully disassembled. Um, I'm gonna get this off, clean up the case. I use carb clean, believe it or not. I don't have a hot tank in house. So clean up best as you can. If you have any questions about taking it apart, if you have any questions about putting it back together, ask me in the comments section. Thank you for watching.